it's Emily. Today we're going to talk about how airspeed can affect your phrasing. You may have been in a car with a driver who pushes and releases the accelerator a lot. And personally, I have been in a car with a person like that and I've uh, experienced a lot of uh, motion sickness. Um, and I feel sometimes we do the same thing with our air. So we send more air and less air, but not in a not in a gradual way, but in a very drastic way. So it's the same as in a car. You want to accelerate gradually so that uh, the people in the car don't feel the, the acceleration too abruptly. And then the same thing when you brake, you want to brake gradually so that you slow down gradually and people don't feel the push in their bodies. So sometimes I hear flutists who give big air pushes uh, sometimes they give big air pushes on certain parts of phrases, certain notes, maybe some registers that they are afraid of. I'll try to give an example, maybe from back, um, let's say. it's not really uh, my airspeed I'm trying to do it it's not exactly maybe the same way that I, as I heard it from players but the air stream is not constant and when I move when I change the amount of air it's not gradual either I'll try to play it another way that would be better And so on and so on so here I was trying to and if I want to put a little bit more air I go but I don't go on a note and if I want to put less I go more gradually except if you have a an accent or a subito piano or subito forte obviously you'll have to do that but sometimes it's not it's not what we should hear and sometimes people are not aware that they're doing it so um, if you don't have a teacher, maybe record yourself and just pay attention to see if you're doing that. There's also another thing that some people tend to do is it's a bit as if they were, um, you know, they were putting their foot in the water, you know, before they go inside the pool. They just put the toe and see how the water is. And if the water is good, they're going to go inside. And some flutists do that on each note. So they play their note and if they like the timber, then they play the note for real. <laughs> so they'll do stuff like this. So they just go, sometimes they don't do it on each note like I just did there. But if they're scared of a note, they do that. So let's say if I try to be a bit, um, So they do that, it creates two problems. So one of the problem is that um, it sounds like that thing is again with the accelerator. And the other thing is that when you start wanting to play fast, you can't do that anymore. So you have to see the, the phrase as this one big thing and not stop on each note or on the specific notes to give it more, you know? The phrase is this big thing. And yes, your sound is important and the timbre is important, but as flutists, we work so hard to get a nice sound and a nice timbre. And sometimes we get overwhelmed by that thought. And then we forget that there's a phrase and there's a music. And the listener is not listening to each sound, grading each sound, saying this, is, this note was a 10 and this note was an 8. And obviously, the timbre might change a little bit from one note to the other. But if you, if you do... This way of on notes, it changes even more. So you're trying to avoid something and you create something else that's almost worse. And by doing that, you cut your phrase. You have to keep in mind the big phrase and not get cut in the little detail of each note in the phrase. So you want a nice sound in general, but don't forget your long phrase. So if I play the same thing that I just played before, instead of going...
you see where I, I test. I play the note, oh, it's good enough, now I'll play it louder. If I try to just do the same as if I was singing it, because you know when you sing, you're usually very musical, and sometimes when we take the instrument, we overthink things, so if you just go, da da la da 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 and then you try to do the same, I'm not a singer, then you try to do the same with your instrument. Even if you're not a singer, like me, I'm not a singer, um, it's not about uh, the quality of your voice, it's about that natural musicality that's inside of you, that sometimes with the instrument we tend to um, lose because we're too caught in technical, technical issues. So here it was more gradual. If I put a little bit more air, it's more gradual. I don't push on one note. Because when you push like that, you're really cutting the phrase. And then no matter how beautiful your sound, we lose the pleasure of listening to you. And we feel a bit that motion sickness that you feel when the driver is pushing and releasing the gas pedal too much, you know. So um, keep the big picture, listen to yourself, record yourself, um, be aware. If you have a teacher, that your teacher should tell you if you're doing that. Um, keep your airstream constant. I know I say that a lot, but it's so important. And once you feel that, it will be very helpful for you. One way to do that too, is to play without sound and just like this. I used to do that a lot when I was a student and I wanted to practice late at night and I was not allowed to make noise and I realized it was helping with a lot of different things like airspeed because I could really focus on the airspeed doing that without paying that much attention to my sound but then my sound would benefit from the exercise because the airspeed being equal is very helpful to the sound. You can also practice just visualizing like this And I'm not saying it should always be equal, but more gradual if you're doing a nice phrase like that. Ob obviously, as I said before, if you have an accent, if you have a subito forte or a subito piano, which is like, subito means uh, right now, you know, a big change in dynamic, then it's different. But when you're doing a long phrase, which is most, most of the time maybe, uh, be careful with that, that uh, sometimes people don't notice they're doing it and that can improve your playing by a lot just by being aware of that little detail. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. Uh, if you're interested in taking lessons with me, it's in the description. And uh, if you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and see you next time. Thanks for watching.